How do you optimize a model? There's a lot of ways to answer that, but let's first dive into a simpler question. How do you come up with a line of best fit? Is it this or this? What if I said it could be both? Today, we're going to continue our discussion from last time and talk about gradient descent and loss functions, the tools we use to optimize models. Let's start off with loss functions. In order for a line of best fit to be drawn, there needs to be a way to figure out what lines are better fits than others. That is, we need to evaluate how poorly your prediction is to its true value. That's where loss comes in. Loss is a measure of how wrong a model's predictions are. And the goal of every single AI model ever? Minimize loss. It's how we optimize models. To do so, we use these things called loss functions, of which there are several types. Let's go over a couple basic ones that apply to linear regression. L1 loss measures the absolute differences between the predicted values and the true values. In other words, it calculates how far off each prediction is. It doesn't really matter whether it's too high or too low. Mathematically, it's just the sum of the absolute errors. L2 loss, on the other hand, measures the square differences between predictions and true values. Instead of just looking at the distance, it squares the errors, and we'll see why in a bit. These functions are the foundation of how models learn to make better predictions. But which one's the best? It all comes down to outliers. Depending on the task, you might prefer L1 or L2 loss, or even a combination of the two. The L1 loss function is great when you want to minimize large outliers because it treats every mistake equally, no matter how big or small. On the other hand, L2 loss squares the differences, meaning bigger mistakes are penalized much more heavily. This makes L2 loss great for focusing on overall accuracy, but can be sensitive to outliers. So those are loss functions. Let's talk about gradient descent next. In a sentence, gradient descent is an iterative process that finds the best weights and biases that minimizes loss. Here's how it works. First, we initialize some random weights and biases. The model starts with some random guesses, usually small values close to zero. Next, we calculate the loss. Based on those initial guesses, the model calculates how wrong its predictions are compared to the actual values. And finally, we adjust parameters. The model adjusts the weights and biases to minimize loss. Then, it repeats this process of calculating loss and adjusting parameters over and over until the loss can't get any smaller. But here's the key takeaway. The gradient descent doesn't need to find the exact lowest loss. It just needs to get close enough for the model to perform well. Next time you're training a model, just think of gradient descent as a ball rolling downhill to find the sweet spot for your weights and biases where the model is optimized and ready to predict. So that's gradient descent. We'll briefly go over some key terms surrounding this process. Convergence. This is really our goal with gradient descent. The point at which updates to your parameters stop making significant progress towards reducing the loss function. And the next three terms are things that help us out during this process. Learning rate. This controls how big a step you take in the direction of the gradient. Too small, and it might take forever to converge. Too large, and you could overshoot the minimum, or never converge at all. Batch size. This is the number of data points the model processes before updating its parameters during training. Smaller batch sizes give more frequent updates, but can be noisy, while larger batch sizes provide smoother updates, but are computationally more expensive. Epics. One epic is a complete pass through the entire data set during training. In practice, we train a model for multiple epics to allow it to learn effectively balancing underfitting, which is too few epics, and overfitting, too many epics. Don't worry too much about these terms. We'll cover all of them in a later video about hyperparameters. And that's it. That's all you need to know about loss functions and gradient descent. Let's quickly review what we went over today. Loss functions. These measure how wrong a model's predictions are. We covered two popular types, L1 loss and L2 loss. Then we talked about gradient descent, which is the optimization algorithm that adjusts a model's weights and biases to minimize loss. Now you know how loss functions and gradient descent works. Next time, we'll talk about hyperparameters. Until then, you can shoot me any question you have on Instagram, at Pranav Patnaik. That's it for now. Hope that helps.